Bonjour, my name is Geneva Kijic and I am a First Nations woman from Grassy Narrows, Ontario. I am a mother of four, two girls and two boys. I have worked in the climate change field since 2017 and I have loved it ever since. Throughout my journey of working on climate change, I have first started at Grand Council of Treaty 3 in 2017. And I, were, I was originally hired on as the climate education coordinator. I had recently accepted my new role as climate specialist in May 2020. I'll just start tell t by telling you a little bit of our organization. Our organization, Grand Council Treaty 3, is a First Nations political organization. We're located in Northwestern Ontario. Our mandate is to at the direction of the leadership for the benefit protection of the citizens, the administrative office of Grand Council Treaty Number 3 protects, preserves, and enhances treaty and Aboriginal rights. This is achieved by advancing the exercise of inherent jurisdiction, sovereignty, nation building, and traditional governance with the aim to preserve and build the Anishinaabe Nation's goal of self-determination. I work, I work with our Treaty 3 Grand Chief, otherwise known as our Gichita. Our current Grand Chief is Francis Kavanaugh of Nyok Kamegwining First Nation. I just wanted to share a quote from when we had declared our Treaty 3 climate crisis. It just shows a little bit of the Grand Chief's view on climate change in First Nations. So the quote goes as follows. The well-being of our nation and way of life is of the utmost importance to our leadership and declaring climate emergency is just one way we can continue to care for each other and Mother Earth. Since time immemorial, Creator entrusted the Anishinaabe to care for a kit, land, and nibe water on Turtle Island. The Anishinaabe have always maintained a spiritual connection to the land and firmly believe that we are the land and the land is us. In the photo, we were attending an emergency management planning meeting. I am last on the right, and then right next to me is our Grand Chief, Francis Kavanaugh. At Grand, Grand Council Treaty 3, I am part of the Territorial Planning Unit Department. Our unit is, has 10 staff currently, and we're looking to hire five more and build our department. I'll start by introducing them. They've been a great team, very supportive throughout my work experience at Grand Council Treaty 3. So I'll start by introducing Lucas Kang, our Territorial Planning Unit Director and Water Specialist, and myself, Geneva Kijik, Climate Specialist, Dave Lindsay, Fish and Wildlife Director, Chris Herc, Environmental Monitoring Coordinator, Monica Humnick, Emergency Planning Coordinator, Haley Krolik, MEI Coordinator, Michelle Shepard, Regulatory Specialist, Chelsea Jack, Project Coordinator, Tammy Galis, Fish and Trapping Assistant, and Drew Scott, Climate Education Coordinator. So I will start by doing just a little brief overview on what is climate change and why is it happening. So climate change occurs when a region ex region experiences a change in climate such as the desert getting snow. Is that normal? No. Although our changes haven't been as obvious as snow in the desert, we have had hotter days in the summer and warmer winters. So why is climate change happening? Gases, we can't see them, but they are there. Gases, otherwise known as emissions, such as carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrous oxide are of the many GHGs in our atmosphere. These GHGs come from things we do in our everyday life, like driving, watching TV, turning on a light in your house, buying things, even the way you may dispose of your waste. These gases contribute to something called the greenhouse effect. The greenhouse effect is what we need for human life to survive on this planet. While the greenhouse effect is needed, there is a natural greenhouse effect which generates GHGs from things like plants, trees, swamps, lakes and oceans, and the polar ice cap. 
these things hold emissions and release them into our atmosphere, but what is causing global warming is a man-made greenhouse effect. The man-made greenhouse effect comes from human activity. The greenhouse effect then causes global warming, which occurs when the layer of greenhouse gases is thicker than usual, trapping more heat from the sun in our atmosphere. The sun sends energy and some energy escapes, but due to the thickness of the gases, the energy stays in our atmosphere and heats our planet. So some heat from the sun gets sent in and then usually it bounces out, but due to the greenhouse gases around our planet, the heat from the sun gets trapped in and the more gases there are, the more heat gets trapped in and less gets radiated, radiated back out into space. Life as Climate Education Coordinator since 2017, I've had the opportunity to work in 12 schools in Treaty 3. I have taught First Nations youth about climate change adaptation and mitigation. I had coordinated several youth initiatives, including hosting the annual Treaty 3 Youth Climate Summit. I also had some youth from Grassy Narrows and Inigaming First Nation join me in Vancouver during the Adaptation Canada 2020 conference. I just added some photos to the slide and the top photo is our environmental monitoring coordinator Chris Herk and he was giving a demonstration on water quality during our annual climate summit. In the bottom left we have our Nyok Kameg winning youth team. In this picture we are playing climate change jeopardy and we had a local elder Mary Louise from the community come and talk about changes she's seen in the land throughout her life. And then the last two pictures are pictures we've taken during the Adaptation Canada 2020 conference in Vancouver. So since I've started as climate specialist, I've assisted our organization and treaty number three leadership in declaring our communities are facing a climate crisis. I have coordinated the Treaty Number no. 3 Emissions Reductions Project, which focuses on establishing recycling and composting projects in our 28 communities. I am currently working on developing the Treaty Number no. 3 Climate Strategy, which focuses on adaptation, mitigation, and emergency management. I am currently working with Environmental Climate Change Canada on having high-grade weather stations installed in Treaty Number no. 3 First Nations. I'm currently coordinating the climate vulnerability assessments in our Treaty 3 communities as, as well. Exciting opportunities that I've had while working as climate specialist in, include attending the Adaptation Canada 2020 conference in Vancouver, BC. I've had a chance to attend a networking meeting, a very small meeting with Dr. David Pearson of Laurentian University and Natural Resources Canada staff. I've attended amazing, useful workshops that help created, create ideas for climate change adaptation and mitigation. Some more exciting opportunities I've had was speaking at the Assembly of First Nations National Climate Summit in Whitehorse, Yukon. I have contributed to the planning of the Assembly of First Nations National Climate Strategy, and during this event, I've met David Suzuki. I have just attached some photos that were taken during our trip. The top left shows the room I presented it in, and then the top right is a picture of me with Mr. Suzuki, and the bottom left is me during my presentation. Bottom middle is the view from our hotel. And then the last picture is a picture we, we took at Fish Lake. What was amazing about this photo is that while it was taken, we were surrounded by mountains and there are wolves howling in every direction. So it was a very amazing, very beautiful experience. And then the exciting opportunities just kept on coming. Um, in December 2020, I've gotten an email from 
the Minister of Environment and Climate Change, Jonathan Wilkinson, which is I was offered a position to serve on the Sustainable Development Advisory Council of Canada. So I'll have the opportunity to work with environmental climate change and Canada staff and the Minister of Climate Change himself. And then of course, another exciting opportunity is being part of this wonderful day, International Day of Women and Girls in Science. I just wanna say thank you to Laurentian University for inviting me to partake. And miigwech.